Hey everyone, this is Andy Brown. I'm the head instructor at the Climber School of Real Estate in Orlando, Florida. This is another state exam math tutorial video for your real estate license. On our website, climberrealestateschool.com, we have a free practice exam, 100 questions and 10 math questions. This one's number 92. This one is an income capitalization problem. This is what you would use to evaluate the value of an income producing property. So let's do it together. Let's read this. John purchased an apartment building that has monthly net income of $4,500. Monthly expenses are $1,250. If an investor desires an 8% return, what is the value of this property? Well, there, there's a few concepts here that you need to be aware of before you even start the math. Let's go over those. First of all, if you're going to do an income capitalization math problem, and even better than that, in real life, if you're going to evaluate an income producing piece of property, you have to be able to write this down. Let me, let me remind you what this is. This is a flow. Potential gross income, which is all the money that it can make if 100% of the units were rented 100% of the time. Then you subtract the vacancy and losses because nothing is ever 100%. Add in miscellaneous income, like how much money you're making from the, from the coin machines or the laundry or some uh, Coke machines. That gives you something called effective gross income. And then if you take that effective gross income and you subtract operating expenses, that leaves you with a number called net operating income, otherwise known as N. O I. That's the number that you want. The other thing you have to know is this income capitalization little memory peg, I over RV. I always and only stands for net operating income. It's none of this other stuff. V is the value of the building, and really it can be any value you want if you're net, uh, analyzing it. It can be what you paid for it what you want to sell it for, what someone's offering for you, anything. You can use that for your analysis. R, R is called capitalization rate, otherwise sometimes we call it cap rate. And it's kind of like a, a, think of it as an internal rate of return that an investor is looking at while they're basically balancing the value or what they're gonna pay versus how much money it's, the building's bringing in. So you put these two together and guess what? You get a problem on your state real estate exam. But here's what's going to happen. The state is going to flat out give you one of these three, guaranteed. Then they're going to give you enough information to calculate a second one and 99% guarantee is going to be so you can calculate net operating income. Right, that's pretty much the one that you have to calculate. So now you've got two, and the question's gonna be, what's the third one? And look at this problem. This is a great example of what you'll see on the state exam. They're, they're giving you net income, and they're giving you the R. Investor desires an 8% return, what's the value of the property? Now this also contains, on purpose for me, two tricks that you're gonna see on the state exam. Trick number one. They gave you monthly net income. So the monthly net income, according to the problem, is $4,500. You want annual, because you have an 8% per year annual return. You've got to keep your units the same. Yearly, yearly. So we have to multiply this by 12. $4,500 per month times 12 months per year is $54,000. Now our units are the same, year and year. The second trick is it tells us monthly expenses are $1,250 a month. Look at this. Expenses were already subtracted from the effective gross income 
to get the net operating income. You don't then subtract expenses again. Here's what the state wants you to do. They want you to forget that because you're stressed and subtract it again. That will get you the wrong answer. And by the way, that wrong answer will be a selection on your state exam. I absolutely positively guarantee you that. But if we take these numbers, we have to go back here to our memory peg. This is what I call swinging it out. Whichever one you want to solve for, you kind of swing it out to the other side, buddy. So right now, we want V. So we're going to take the V value, and we're going to swing it on out to the other side. What does that mean for us? V equals I over R. We have I, which is net operating income. We have R because they gave it to us. Now we just got to fill in the blanks. Let's take a look. What was net operating income? $54,000 per year. What is R? 8%. Let's turn that into a decimal. Move that over two spaces. If we put this into our calculator, 54,000 top number divide 0.08, we get a $675,000. That's your answer on this test, on this practice exam. However, if you make the mistake, and I want you to try this, if you subtract $1,250 from $4,500 and multiply by 12, you will actually get D, 487,500 and that's the wrong answer. The right answer is A, 675,000 and by the way, as usual, good luck on the state exam.